Chief Savage reached out to me. He said, hey, the Flyers are doing something cool. You should come check it out. We need goalies. And I knew it was something different. I'd see you out there. And then once I learned that you guys were all military over there, I said, damn, man, I want to be a part of that group. I remember coming back from my deployment. And I remember thinking to myself, like, I don't belong here. And then I found the Warriors. Being able to walk into a locker room and some of the people in that locker room going through the same stuff, felt the same things that I felt. It's comforting to know that you're not alone. We're not just a hockey team. We're here for everybody. We're here to help. It's the way it is with this team, too. We're always taking care of each other. And you kind of have that sense of camaraderie that really is non-existent anywhere else. So that, to me, was the biggest thing. So I knew right then and there I was, I was supposed to be part of this team. State Air Force. Do you have to say your full name? Do you have to say your government name? Do you want do you want to feel how sweaty my hands are right now? My hands are dry. You feel that. Look at this. No. A rock. What do you think about what if I interview you? Okay. Yeah. yeah, like literally all these people, you're with four jackasses. That's it. <laughs> oh, excuse me, three. <laughs> <laughs> Don't sell yourself short, man. No, there's four jackasses and then one gentleman. You got rebel yeah, here. Rebel. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so my name is Brittany Shortall. I am a goaltender for the Warriors. I probably started playing hockey at like 17. Like I was a late bloomer. Each summer we'd have a different sport. And this summer we were doing, we, we got into hockey, street hockey. I was actually the first one to be like, yeah, let me try goalie. And so we had like this terrible goalie gear. Like we even had a helmet, didn't have a mask on it. So I would get nailed in the face and they'll be like, ha ha ha. Like, but, um, the same for a face. <laughs> yeah. And so I fell in love with the sport. Devin Riccio was a sergeant in the Marine Corps. A guy by the name of Eric Lindros, you ever hear of him? Started playing, um, just dominated the league. Right when I was just soaking up all things hockey. And that kind of lit the fire. Nehemiah Tinsley, Chief Petty Officer, United States Navy, retired. So I started watching 86, 87, watching Hextall slash people fling himself all around the ice, making great saves. And so I said, okay, I'll try that, right? And that's when I fell in love. Stopping someone from trying to score is like the greatest high to me. <laughs> I'm Bill Duffy, goaltender for the Flyers Warriors. I'm a 21 year retired Air Force veteran. I started off with this program. One of the chiefs in the Air Force told me about it. Knew from the get-go, once I stepped on the ice for the first practice, that it was totally different than any other hockey program. Well, if you ever seen one of my toe drags, I mean, it's obvious that I've been playing forever, you know? <laughs> <laughs> my name's Eric Drennan, uh, United States Navy. Just played a bunch of street hockey growing up. You know, I never I never played ice until high school because it was so expensive. But I've, I've been a lifelong Flyers fan. I mean, every, you know, my dad screaming at the TV. I, I remember it all. I just kind of grew up in a hockey family. It wasn't a matter of if, it was just a matter of when. My dad was in the service. My grandfather was a screaming eagle in Korea. I was a uh, physician assistant in the Navy, part of a forward surgical team. I was uh, on an army base and they kind of put us all together, there's 13 of us, and they, they're like, okay, you guys are the medical unit. You're going to Fab Apache. It's just kind of like, you know, right off the Black Hawk, right to us, stabilize and get out to, to Germany. When I was in high school, I didn't want to do college because I had issues making friends. I wasn't the most popular person and I didn't want to go to school with those people. So I said, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna just go in the military. And my dad was in the Air Force and his dad was in the Royal Air Force as a pilot. And then I was actually gonna go Marines, but my dad decided to say, you know, let's go Air Force and blah, blah, blah. You know, eight week boot camp compared to 13 week. Mm -hmm. You know, crying in a corner compared to crying while you're sleeping, you know. <laughs> it's all the same, right? <laughs> no, same thing. I go through 12 years of school and you're like, the last thing I want to do is go back to school. And then boom, Paris Island. And you're sitting there and you're like, why is it so hot at 2 o'clock in the morning? Like, <laughs> what is going on here? 
So I'm getting ready to graduate. Coach takes me to lunch. Sits me down and says, the reason why I had you uh, come out to lunch with me is because uh, you're a very nice young man and I wanna see you do something with yourself. I don't want you to continue to hang out with the guys you've been hanging out with and uh, encourage me to, to, to make a move. And the move for me was Navy and uh, I couldn't be the better for it. So right after college, I, you know, I go to uh, Officer Development School in Newport, Rhode Island. You know, this is what you're supposed to do. This is how you salute. This is how you do the, the naval talk. You know, from there, you, you kind of get your first duty station. You know, for me, that was Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. And it's mostly orthopedic stuff, you know, because it's, it's sick call, so you get your colds and, you know, your ankle sprains and your heat casualties from all the runs that the Marines are doing. From there, I moved on to a different clinic, and that's not why I joined, right? I joined because I wanted to deploy overseas. I wanted to get some, some real action. I wanted to help the guys overseas fighting and injured. I didn't want to treat sprained ankles, right? So I got my wish. I deployed in 2013 to a forward surgical team um, in Afghanistan. I went to Iraq in 2009. As we were leaving, a buddy of mine said, yo, we got to uh, we got to link up with a different unit and go to Afghanistan. Like, this kind of sucks, so. Got back in 2009. At the end of 2010, I was back on orders and uh, got my wish. Uh, very, very kinetic. In Iraq, I did over 400 missions on the outside the wire. Wow. So, wow. with a combat action badge and a combat action medal from the Air Force. I was trained to defend the ship from incoming missiles. I can't sit there at, in front of the radar screen, you know, with the power to defend the ship or sink the ship and not be focused and ready. The expectation is, you got it, Chief. I was in the military for two years. When I first went in, I was a nuclear cop over in Minot, North Dakota. Yeah. And then they moved me over to Dover, where I was at the commercial vehicle inspection gate as a cop. I was uh, diagnosed with severe PTSD that wouldn't allow me to do my job correctly. So the military decided to let me go after two years. You don't get any training, you know, in PA school, a physician says you don't really get a lot of training as far as operating, you know. Over there, it is literally trial by fire. You know, it is an incoming casualty. Cut here, do this, just kind of do that and try to save his life. It's insane, you know, there was a bucket of body parts, you know, half the time they come in, they're not, they don't have any legs. And they're screaming and you're just like, it's, it's, it goes by so quick, it feels like it never happened. You know? Words, are, it's hard to describe. I was warned when I retired that, you know, you're, you're gonna, it's gonna be very different. You're gonna hit a little bit of a, a low state because you're gonna wake up one day and what's your purpose now? Like, yeah. now what do you do? I think John Q. Public doesn't understand that. They think, oh, you're home, everything's fine. And it's like, well, not necessarily. I'm, I'm coming from 24-7. Like something bad's gonna happen, now I'm home. And now I'm still waiting, like my mind hasn't caught up to the fact that I'm back home. And it's like, why are you so agitated? Why are you so angry? I have to be 100%, 100% of the time. And people don't understand that when you first come home. Before I deployed, the guy was, you know, they give you this briefing about, you're never going to be the same person. And you're sitting there like, yeah, okay, dude, like, I'm strong, I'm a, I'm a, you know what I mean? Uh, nothing's going to change me, right? When you get out, and now you're a civilian, here's your DD-214, good luck. So now you come back, and you want to talk about war stuff, but you don't know who to talk to. And I played men's league with guys that I've known for many years. But I remember distinctly sitting there with my stick in the hand, ready to go out on the ice, just thinking to myself, like, I don't feel like I know these guys anymore. And I just gave up hockey. I was like, well, I guess this is my life now. You know, I just, I don't feel like I'm part of society anymore. And then I found the Warriors. I've been fighting for years with this PTSD, but you know, this team, you guys don't understand how great of a help you guys are. 
even if you're just on the ice skating and making fun of me, or me making fun of you guys. <laughs> Coming out of the military, you lose that sense of community, that sense of being a part of a team. More so just being part of a hockey team, we are we're a little tight-knit family. So I get to talk to these guys when we're not on the ice, I get to bust it up when we are on the ice. So it's really helped me. Transition, I've been out for a couple years, but it's still, there's always something missing when you come out and it's just kind of filled that gap for me a little bit. I think the void is so deep in the military because of this, the stakes of the military. This team specifically uh, really helps with that because we are constantly surrounded by death and trauma and all kinds of stuff. And you kind of have that sense of camaraderie that really is non-existent anywhere else. So that to me was the biggest thing. As soon as I hit the locker room, just listening to the conversation, you know I'm a quiet guy, so I, I'm listening and just the conversation is very similar to what I would hear on board ship. <laughs> There's people <laughs> cracking on each other, that whole thing. But that's, I realized I missed that. The Warrior locker room, it's unique. It's people from really all over the area, all hockey players, but gone through different experiences. You know, the military basically takes you and spreads you out throughout the world. And despite that, despite being in different parts of the world, we all are uniquely bonded. When we step on the ice, we're all a family. All those characters come together and we, uh, the common goal on the ice is to win the game, you know, but it's just amazing. The uniqueness, but the, the closeness of our group. I'm sitting in the locker room getting dressed and in walks Brad Marsh with his giant hands and he's like, hey buddy, how's it going? And you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he's sitting right next to me. But, you know, you're just like, wow, this is something different. Yeah, Rebel is my PTSD service dog. He is a chocolate lab. He just turned six on October 15th. I got out in January 2017, about in August 2017, I eventually decided to go along with the program and uh, receive a service dog, and by December of 2017, he was in my hands. He's not just my service dog, he goes out to everybody. When we're out on the ice, he's usually in the penalty box or on the bench, and he just, he puts everybody in a good mood. During our training, when I first got him, we went to Walmart. What happened is I actually went into a full-blown panic attack in there. To bring me back, I need someone to touch me or talk to me. So with Rebel laying across me, being able to feel him move, it kind of brings me back into the present too. If it wasn't for him, I most likely would not be here today. I never thought of love being a huge part of my life until you just mentioned it, but now that you have, it's, yeah, it is a big part of my life. Um, Luke, he is not just my boyfriend, not just my significant other, but he's my rock. And he knows me better than anybody else. And I love him so much for that. He means so much to me, he has no idea. <laughs> and, um, and I'm just, I'm so excited for us to grow as a family, for us to be together for the rest of our lives. So I've been with the fire department since 2008, and I love it. I, I couldn't see me doing anything else. Um, just the opportunity to go to work, do something new each day to impact people's lives. Nobody calls 911 because they're having a good day, so it's something special to know that you've had a positive outcome on what was the worst part of their day or life. I don't go to work and hope somebody has a fire or something like that, but if there is one, I want me and my guys to be there to try and help them. I joined the military because I wanted to help people. I thought you know, I could do a lot of good helping people there and, and just to be able to continue doing that uh, back home in the city where I grew up, it's a great honor. It's unbelievable. But what I don't want to see happen is this, we can't start chicken hawking. We can't start gold hogging. We can't, you know what I'm saying? We got them, we can't change a thing. Let's keep going forward, okay? 
We're here to win a championship. Okay, guys, let's go. Let's go. Say it right to No icing. Go, 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 go. Smart play. Smart, simple play. You know, Brad and Rob, they're our, they're our coaches. They're, they're really the glue of the team. They do so much for us off the ice, and people don't really realize that. I mean, to give so much time to this program that helps out veterans uh, is immeasurable. <laughs> Let's just play hockey. Let's just play hockey out here, okay guys? To see the amount of work that they put in, especially leading up to the Classic, day in and day out with the development of practice schedule and making sure the teams have everything they need, um, and then putting events together like this, it's incredible to see two guys who, who didn't serve, didn't have to say, yes, we'll help you out, but they did anyway, and I think that's pretty incredible. Stick, stick on the ice and be ready to bang that rebound in and get those greasy, gritty goals. Having the, the privilege, I would say, to be on the ice with the guys I'm on the ice with and then to, to be under a legendary hockey player uh, in my book, uh, Coach Marsh, being under him is enough for me. Rob is, is, is great. I see him out there kind of giving the guys the finer points of what they should be doing, how they should approach it, and what's, what's the meaning behind what we're trying to do. You know, working behind the scenes, anything from fantasy camp to this, this big tournament coming up, um, to the jerseys, to the presentations of the jerseys, to the social media stuff. I mean, there's just so much that those guys do for us. And that's why, you know, for me, I want to give my 100% effort on the ice for them because they really do go above and beyond. On the jerseys, uh, each member has their branch of service. So you have to take an immense amount of pride to wear your branch of service's emblem again. Other teams, you just kind of you sign here, you, you pay a check, you know, pay money, and then you get your jersey. You literally earn it, but you don't earn it so much on the ice. Like you start earning it the day you sign and you swear in. And that's the way I looked at it when I got that jersey. I'm like, man, this this has been like almost a decade in the making for this thing. I felt like that I finally accomplished something. At that point in my life when I first joined, I didn't accomplish anything in years. Having your picture taken with your jersey next to Brad, it means you're ready to be part of this team and, and it's, it's awesome. I'm a part of something much bigger than myself, a bunch of people who served, a coach who's played years. I can't speak to everybody else on how they felt when they got theirs, but to me, it was huge, man. it was everything. Just like we wore, you know, camo overseas and this and that. This is not just a jersey, this is a uniform. I represent the Flyers Warriors when you're wearing that jersey and you have to carry yourself that way. It's a big deal, it's not lost on me. It is a dream come true and I don't know what you guys have as far as friendships that you've built, but I know I've got 76 friends that I never had before. All right, one goal, that's all we need. The Warrior program helps out in a bunch of different ways. I think it's made me a better person because I have, you know, some place to go and, and be a part of another community. We love you guys because we're all vets. We're all one team yet, right? It's, it's growing, it's growing, and I want to see it continue to grow and, and, you know, be more active in the community because that's what it's all about. It's about community service and us giving back and, and doing stuff for each other. And then there's the hockey aspect of it. Whether it's in the community, whether it's how, how great we are as a team, where we can get to is, is only limited by us and our imagination, you know, as far as where we can take the program. This team isn't just about playing hockey. This team's also about helping each other and helping teammates. And for that to be able to expand into nationwide, that's a lot of veterans getting the help that they need. We're a hockey team first, but we're a family always. The reason, you know, this is different than any other hockey team I've been on is because I'm not skating for myself. I'm skating for the guys who can't skate. 
you know, for the guys that we lost. And that's kind of how I feel about it, you know. I just I'm skating for those that are not with us anymore. So, yeah, <laughs> sorry, but <clears throat> yeah. So that's that's all I have to say about that, I guess. Oh,